factors that affect on the food industry and how they can be effectively controlled. On the learned outcomes, by the end of this module, you should be able to determine the requirements of bacteria, understand the temperatures involved in the growth and death of bacteria, identify specific bacteria, define toxins and spores, and state which substances will stop the growth of bacteria. To understand the problems caused by some bacteria, it's necessary to understand basic bacteriology. Bacteria are single-celled organisms, they are living creatures, they are found everywhere, in other words they are ubiquitous, and that includes on or in raw food, people, soil, air and water. A small number cause disease, these are called pathogens, or pathogenic bacteria. Most bacteria are harmless, some are essential, some spoil food, and these are called spoilage bacteria. Other bacteria break down decay and matter, some help digestion, some are beneficial to the food industry, for example cheese and yoghurt manufacture. Bacteria are microscopic, they vary between 0.001mm to 0.003mm. Colonies are visible following lab incubation. The effects of large numbers of spoilage bacteria can be detected on meat, for example when there has been a breakdown in controls, i.e. slime and odour. They come in various shapes, and as you can see on the slide, this is how the bacteria look under a microscope. First of all, cocci. These are round shaped, for example Staphylococcus aureus. Bacilli are rod shaped, for example Salmonella, E. coli. Spirochytes are spiral shaped, for example Leptospira or Leptospirosis. Vibrios are comma shaped, for example Cholera. Let's have a look at the size, shape and structure of bacteria. Now the slide there is showing you a rod shaped cell. First of all you've got the cell wall which is a rigid structure that provides shape. The cytoplasm, this is the body of the bacterium. The cell membrane which controls passage of waste and nutrients. The nuclear material, this is the brain of the bacterium. The flagella, these allow the bacteria to move in liquids. The capsule, found on slime bacteria. And the fimbriae may aid adhesion, so they can stick to other cell walls. So what do bacteria require in order to grow or to multiply? Because when they multiply, when they grow to large numbers, that's when they start to cause problems. First of all, they need food. Now food consists of certain nutrients, protein, fats, vitamins, minerals such as carbon and sugar. The food or the nutrient that they are mostly concerned with is high protein food such as meat, fish and dairy produce. They also require moisture. And here we are looking at the water activity and the available water. Pure water has an AW of 1, 1 1.00. Water is needed to transport nutrients and waste. The bacteria's preferred range is 0 0.99 to 0 0.95. Some foods don't have enough available water for growth. Some bacteria can survive dehydration as spores which we'll cover later on. Staphylococcus aureus can survive relatively high salt levels. And you might see it written down sometimes as a halophile. Warmth. Although the danger zone is coded as 5 to 63 degrees Celsius, the range for most rapid multiplication of pathogens is usually 20 to 50 degrees Celsius the best temperature round about body temperature which is 37 degrees celsius then we can speak
split these into bacteria that require low temperatures, medium temperatures and high temperatures. First of all, psychrophiles. These prefer temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius. These include bacteria which cause spoilage in the fridge, for example Pseudomonas, which is a slime bacteria. Important pathogens include Listeria and Clostridium botulinum type E. Mesophiles prefer 20 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius and these include most of the common pathogens that cause food poisoning. Thermophiles prefer temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius and these are important in the canning industry and can cause blown cans. We've also got psychotrophs, which is not shown on the slide. These are capable of multiplying below 20 degrees Celsius, but prefer above 20 degrees C. Bacteria reproduce by binary fission, or splitting into two. The time taken for a complete cell cycle, effectively the number of bacteria doubles, is called the generation time, or TG. Speed varies with the presence or absence of other requirements. If optimum conditions, it can be every 10 minutes. In other words, from 1,000 to 1 million in 1 hour and 40 minutes. That's the worst case scenario. This is where the TG equals 10 minutes, and one pathogen will become approximately 17 million in just 4 hours. An example of some generation times of well-known pathogens. Salmonella. At 37 degrees TG, that equals 20 minutes, so they double every 20 minutes. A 10 degrees C TG equals 10 hours. E. coli 0157 and Clostridium perfringens. At 45 degrees Celsius, the TG is 10 minutes. Listeria monocytogenes at 4 degrees Celsius, TG equals 30 hours. Lag phase is 2 days in milk. Unfortunately, pathogens do not affect the taste, colour, texture or look of food. And therein lies the problem. We don't know they're there until it's too late, until we're suffering from food poisoning symptoms. Food spoilage bacteria does affect the taste, colour, smell of food, etc. Some bacteria require oxygen. Some bacteria can survive quite well without oxygen. And these are called aerobes and anaerobes and these can be obligate and facultative. pH or acidity. Most bacteria prefer around 7, which is neutral pH. Below 4.5, most do not multiply. Some bacteria can survive pH of 4.5 for some time, for example E. coli 0157, which we class as acid tolerant. As far as competition goes, food poison bacteria tend to be less competitive than natural flora. Hence the doctor's reluctance to prescribe antibiotics as natural flora are likely to be destroyed. Bacteria also prefer an absence of preservatives because these do inhibit the growth of bacteria.